man in the middle of the road. Well, when they got next to me, they say that I begin to speak in tongues. And that police said, there ain't no way that I'm going to touch him. I'm going to leave him out of here. Y'all deal with it the best you can. And he threw gravels all over the place. Get down there. I tell you what, we didn't care to worship God. Church and 
and, and have a little shout and service and stuff. Right. But that tribulation, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cause us to get down to business. We've been gone. Yep. Right now, we don't think we have to. You're right. we 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 got You're it too right. easy. Right. It's easy. Y'all been feeling the same thing. But when we get to that place, <laughs> it ain't too far down the road. No. When right. we get to that place, we'll get down to business with Shut God. Yeah. When we do, we're going to see God do great and mighty things. Like we ain't never seen. Miracles, signs, and wonders. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's who the church is. It's part of who we are. Yeah, we are. Miracles, signs, and wonders. Right. And people put that down for years. Yes, they have. But it ain't wrong. Right. <laughs> it's right. It's right. It's what God. Power that's the way God does something. Yeah. Uh, he wants his name to be exalted. Exalted. You know, one of these days, not too far down the road, Jesus is coming back. Yeah, not right. He's gonna take his church out. He's gonna uh -huh. take his church home, and he's not going. He's not coming for a bunch of weaklings, a bunch of babies. Okay. No, he's coming uh -huh. for people that's made herself ready. Uh -huh. walking in what he's made us to be. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's Amen. Praise the Lord. Feel his presence. Yes, <laughs> he's ready to have the hear the pastor coming. Yes, sir. Teach us. God is so good. All the time, God is good. Amen. Will you do me a favor? Just go hug somebody and give them a big squeeze and say, I love you. And I'm glad to see you tonight. Amen. If you got to get out of your seat, I know the crowd's uh, down a lot tonight. A lot of people sick and uh, out due to the holidays, but you're here. Amen. And, uh, and so show your love to somebody that's made a special effort to be here. Amen. Tonight. Praise Woo! the Lord. Amen. Now give Jesus another great big cheer if you will. Amen. We praise the Lord for you being here tonight. I, I'm excited about what God is saying and what God is doing. Amen. Uh, I'm glad that, uh, to be here on a Wednesday night. You know, this is the last Wednesday night of 2018. Last Wednesday night of the year. I'm glad I found myself in church. Can someone say amen? I'm glad I was able to be here and be a part of what God is saying and what God is doing. And so we are excited, amen, about that. And thank the Lord. You know, Brother Steve was saying something. I know he's been praying and hearing from the Lord because uh, I've been feeling the same thing. That there is the reason the desire is that not there is because everybody thinks nothing has happened. That's right. And, uh, my, me and my father uh, came over yesterday for Christmas, and uh, we always have a little tradition, whether it's at his house or my house, we'll get us a cup of coffee, I don't care if it's in the middle of the summer, and we'll walk up and down our, our road. We got to walk it and uh, drinking a cup of coffee and just talking about life, and he looked at me and said, and I knew he'd been in the spirit as well, he said, you had a feeling like something is about to happen, and uh, and and I said, yeah, I've been feeling the same thing. And I think there's something that uh, as Brother Tim was talking about and, and also Brother Steve was talking about. And, and I'm talking to you about it now, those that are here and those that will be watching in the future of this. We better get ready. Because yeah. something, you know, I believe something good is going to happen. But I believe there's going to be something that happens going to get some people's attention. I believe there's going to be some things that are happen. Come on, somebody. Help me out now. Because people don't seem to care anymore. Do you remember when 9-11 happened? It's a shame that things like that have to happen. And I'm not speaking doom. I'm not a, a doom and gloom prophet to say anything like that. But I, God gets, the Bible says God doesn't always strive with man. And there's sometimes that he has patience. Uh, he, I mean, uh, let me tell you right now, we better thank God I'm not God. Can someone say amen? I was struck down some stuff a long time ago. But his patience is running thin. And so we better we better get a, uh, get a hold of God and get a hold of him now. Amen. For what is happening and what is coming. And so tonight's like tonight are very important. Amen. For us to keep our our minds stayed upon the Lord. Amen. So uh, if you have your Bibles, I'm going to go to the book of Exodus chapter 38. We're going to finish tonight uh, by the leading of the Lord. Uh, finish on uh, the brazen altar of the tabernacle. 
and uh, I'm gonna do my best not to get too happy, but I may get a little excited tonight. Amen. Give you some good things here. Amen. Glad that Chester and Ludon are back with us. Amen. He could bring you and his wife, and we've been missing them. They've been under the weather, and so we're glad to have them back with us tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. And when we miss you when you're not here, we miss everyone that are not here. So, Amen. Lord. Exodus chapter 38. Exodus chapter 38. Let me enjoy that Christmas play Sunday night. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that participated. Amen. Give everybody a hand clap. Amen. Yeah, everybody yeah, that's yeah. here that participated in the night. We're we, we happy. Amen. Yeah, good. Had a great response. A lot of great people came. A lot of people found out about our church. And so. We're so happy about that. Amen. Uh, Exodus chapter 38, verses 1 through 7, as I will read, and then we'll uh, go to work tonight on, on, uh, on the brazen altar. It says, And he made the altar of burnt offering of shit of wood, five cubits with the length thereof, and five cubits the breadth thereof. It was, uh, it was four square, three cubits the height thereof. And he made the horns thereof on the cor four corners of it. And the horns thereof were of the same, and they overlaid it with brass. And he made all the vessels of the altar, the pots and the shovels and the basins and the flesh hooks and the fire pans, all the vessels thereof made he of brass. And he made for the altar a brazen grape of network under the compass. I want you to also remember that word compass. We didn't get to it last week, uh, but we will be getting into it tonight. Uh, under the compass thereof, beneath the midst of it. And he cast four rings for the four ends of the grape. Uh, of brass to be placed uh, for the, to, excuse me, to, the, to be places for the stabs and made the stabs of shit of wood and overlaid them with brass. And he put the stabs of the rings on the sides of the altar to bear it with all. He made the altar hollow with boards. Can someone say amen, amen. to the reading of the word? of the Lord, for it is blessed. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you, praise the Lord, for this word. Thank you, God, for this time that we're coming together in this brief next few moments, God, that we're giving you. God, we're giving you our mind. God, we're giving you all our senses, God. We're giving everything to you to where we become, can become more like you. We're not here to be more like ourselves or to do our own thing, but we come to your house, God, in respect to become like you, to hear from you, to feel you, to touch you, God, and to experience your glory and your presence. God, speak to us again tonight in the mighty great name of Jesus, and we give you glory and we give you praise for it. If you believe it, clap them hands and give God praise. Amen. One more time. Come on now. There's more than five people in here. Hallelujah. And you may be seated in the presence of God, our great Savior and King. Uh, as we've been talking, uh, and we talked last week and, uh, to all of the uh, adults that was in the back with the children, I apologize. I went a little long last week uh, with all the good stuff, but uh, there was no kids yelling and babies crying, so it made it a bit easier to teach, all right? <laughs> and, uh, and so, yeah, I used kids and abused kids like y'all do me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And, uh, and so we, we were talking about last week that uh, the vessels of the brazen altar, so it just wasn't the brazen altar as we see here. Uh, we see around it with this uh, depiction uh, that there was multiple uh, vessels that was used, and then this is a, a remaking of those particular um, vessels, and they all have a, a plan and a purpose, and, and everything that we talk about in the tabernacle has a purpose, mm -hmm. no matter how minute it is, and there's probably things that even in my own reading and studying and time, uh, uh, and I've been going back, so there'll probably be a day if I'm uh, the Lord lets me live long enough that after we get done with the tabernacle and we teach on a bunch of other things, that we'll go back to a part two uh, tabernacle teaching, maybe a few years from now, whoever, whatever knows, because I'm, I'm still getting stuff, uh, and I don't want to go and retrace myself, so what I'm doing is I'm now putting notes and stuff together for future going over uh, the, the tabernacle itself, because there's so much there, because the Word of God is living. It is not just a book. Can someone say amen? But it is an ever-living, ever-present truth. It is what you can find in Genesis, you can find in your life. What you can find in, in Revelations, you can find in your life. And so uh, when you, and that's like, uh, I read the Bible through uh, every year. 
I have a one-year Bible, and I work and I read through every single year. And, and so the one I have, I've had for many years, and uh, and I read it, make sure I try to read it. Every, even if something was to happen and, and I don't get one day in, I'll make up for it. You know, I always end the book, but I always have to do my own personal reading. And every year when I start going through it, come January the 1st, I'll be going back to Genesis chapter 1. And I've read that stuff. And so sometimes when we begin to replay things that we have, have known, we'll, we'll, if we don't watch out, we will just read it and say, I know this. Uh -huh. yeah. When really, you don't know it all. That's right. Can someone say amen? Yeah. And so every year I find myself, when I get to a passage, I, I've got it marked up, lined up, all kinds of stuff in it. And this past year, uh, I have... I have read over things I had no markings on, and like this year, it has jumped out at me more than ever. And then I know that as I begin to read again next year uh, in the new things, if, if, if I keep an open mind and, uh, and come as a novice. Sometimes the best way to come to God is to come to God stupid. Can someone say amen? You say, God, I'm stupid. Show me something. Can someone say amen? Come on, talk to me. Because if you go to God, act like you already know it. Hello, somebody. Amen. When you go to God, act like you already know it. Then guess what? You ain't not going to get anything. What you have to do is when you come to God, no, no matter how long you've been preaching, no matter how long you've been in service, no matter how long you've been doing anything, you got to come to God and say, God, here I am. I, 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 I don't have nothing. Uh, I need you to show me something, and God will. And so everything that we see here, everything that's working here, going back to my point, it has a purpose. Which then lets me know that uh, each person that is saved um, by the blood of Jesus Christ has a purpose. Amen. You have a purpose. God has got an intention for you. So we're going to just get up. We talk about the pan. Talk about the shovels, the basins, the flesh hooks. All of those first four big major uh, components and tools were used. Pans is what received the ashes. The shovels is what moved them. The basins is what held the blood. The flesh hooks is what was the instrument used to pull meat off of the sacrifice to be able to eat. All those represent the tools that we should want to become and the tools that we should be using uh, for God to uh, do great things in our lives. Something that can receive the past. Something that can feed the fire and remove the past from our life. Uh, something that will hold the precious blood of God. And also the flesh hooks to be able to get in and get the meat of the word of the Lord. And then that took us into... Uh, is, is everyone finished with that? I mean, Going, kind of going quick because I know some of you weren't here. Uh, and then um, the, then we have the fire pans. It was a, a separate pan in itself that helped the fire to mission the holy place, which would take us to the inner court. This fire did, was not, uh, just did not come from man, but came from God. And so we asked to pray to be a pan that will carry his fire. And this is the fire tonight is what we're going to finish the year on. I thought how awesome the timing of God is because the next few moments here, we're just going to be teaching about the fire. And what it did, what it means to our life. Uh, but we're just getting back here. The grate that was on top of it, it was what allowed the ashes to fall through, the oxygen get in there, which represents the Spirit of God. And it begins to blow on them. And then we see that the rings and the stabs that were for transportation, that the altar was being able to be moved, which we then come to the realization that this is not just the altar. Amen. The altar is transportable. You can get on the altar in your car. Can someone say amen? Is anybody glad you can get on the altar in your car? You can get on the altar in your bedroom. You can get on the altar in your in your uh, at your work. You, you, you find a place to get on the altar. Amen. It's transportable. And, and the reason that it was transportable uh, is, is the rings that we see represent the will of God. Find that in Ephesians 5, 15 through 17, talking about the will, walking in the will of the Lord. And so, and then I was kind of rushing through this because we got to teaching about Revelation and a lot of other things. So I'm going to kind of jump here uh, and tell you that the stabs, there were two stabs, two long poles. I say stabs would be like two uh, really long poles that would go through the rings to be able to carry it. And so uh, remember that the, um, that the brazen altar was a place where two things happened. Uh, remember there was slaying and burning. Something had to die, something had to be burned. But the reason something had to die is where something had to live. Well, these staff or the, or the stabs in itself that would come here, I begin to say, God, what do these things mean? And, and one staff represents the death because death happened there. Wow. But the other staff represents the resurrection mm -hmm. because life also happened there. Mm -hmm. So when you come to the altar, something should die, but that also should give something else 
a chance to live. If Jesus would not have died, then guess what? We would not be here tonight living. Can someone say amen? And so when, when the priests would carry the, the, the uh, brazen altar, they would have to carry it by the staffs. They'd have to be walking in death and resurrection. Jesus said, you've got to take up your cross and follow me. But if, you, if you'll suffer with me, you'll reign with me. In other words, uh, you, you've got to be willing to lose your life to gain your life. Kind of don't make no sense in the natural. Why am I losing my life to gain my life? You got to go through the death to end up being resurrected. And so we talk about when you walk in his will, we're walking in his death, but also in his resurrection. When you walk in the will of God, it's not always about being alive. There's something that's got to be killed. The old man's got to die. Right, right. Amen. How many of those old man likes to resurrect itself? Come on, talk to who? How many knows you got an old man that ain't quite as dead as you think he is? Anybody know what I'm saying? Anybody got that? Anybody got that, that old man that says, man, I ain't, I ain't gone just yet. Yeah. Check, you know, how do you know your old man is gone? Let somebody pull out front of you and go 10 feet and turn left. Yeah. Come on, somebody. And without no signal. Oh, my Lord. My old man ain't quite gone just yet, you know. I'll do good there for a while. That's my wife. I'll do good. I ain't, I'm, I'm, I'm happy and doing good. And all of a sudden, something like that happened. And I have to breathe and repent because the old man ain't dead. Man, I mean, knows what I'm saying. Yes, sir. You know, and uh, you, you, the Bible says, "Do good to them that do evil to you." You'll find out sometimes your old man ain't dead. You'll use the eye for the eye, and tooth for tooth. Yes, Scripture, right? Amen. To, to, to do those things, uh, and, and so, but you got to walk in that death and resurrection, and then which takes us to uh, the, the 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 actually the fifth, sixth part of uh, the, what was used in here was the blood. The blood was very important here. It was the blood that got them in. There was a trail of blood all the way from the brazen altar, all the way to the holy place, all the way up and down. This, uh, There was a trail of blood from the top of the cross all the way to the bottom of the cross where we kneel at the feet of Jesus. So when they would come in to the, in, 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 uh, to the brazen altar, we'd kill it, there would be blood there as they would go to pass the brazen altar to go towards the brazen labor, which is our next piece of furniture we'll be talking about. For a week or so, uh, then it was blood there. When they walked into the, the to the holy place, there was blood there. There was the incense and all the blood there. And then finally, when the high priest would go into the holies of holies, finally go into that deep place, they would take that blood from the sacrifice and it would be there. So there was blood from the top to the bottom. Just like there was blood from the top of the cross to the bottom of the cross. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, chastised and our peace was upon him by his stripes for a heel. There was blood that when they put the crown of thorns upon his head, there was blood that came down his face into his beard. Yes. It was blood that came down through his chest all the way down with they, they 39 stripes upon his black back. It was a bloody cross. Mm. Can someone say amen? Now he's glad for the blood. For what can wash your lives in them but the blood of Jesus? What can make me whole again nothing but the blood of Jesus? Which then takes us now to what I want to end up talking about, the fire. And I talked about the fire because uh, the fire, not only was the blood found in every part of the, the temple, but the fire was found in every part of the temple. Every part. Because when the brazen altar would be, was lit by God, we're going to talk about this here in a minute, that was always burning, and then after it was burning, and then it was found in every place. So after they would take the fire, they would go past into the brazen altar, or excuse me, the brazen labor, and they go into the holy place, like the golden candlesticks, get the fire, burn the incense, and then finally they would go into the holy place. And when they went to the holy place, then guess what? It was no longer the uh, it was no longer a, a fire of, a, of man, and from that point, but it was the fire of God, it was God Himself being the fire. So the fire was present in every part of the temple. Uh, and so, as I said here, it was not an ordinary fire, but it was sent from God, uh, sent from the presence of God. It was the part of the fire that led the children of God into the wilderness. So let's go to the book of Leviticus. We're here tonight. Let's do some Bible work. Leviticus chapter 9. Chapter 9, verse 24. The word of the Lord declares. Um, let's uh, let's read 22. And, and Aaron lifted up his hand toward the people and blessed them and came from the offering, the sin offering, the burnt offering, and the peace offering. 
And Moses and Aaron went to the tabernacle of the congregation and came out and blessed the people. And the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the people. And there came a fire out from before the Lord and consumed upon the altar the bark offering and the fat, which when all the people saw, they shouted and fell on their faces. Hmm. You see that? There came a fire out from the Lord, from before the Lord, and consumed upon the altar the burnt offering and the fat, which was when all the people saw, they shouted and fell on their faces. So what happened here, the fire came down from heaven. All right? This was the same fire that had been leading them during the middle of the night. Okay? Uh, it was their compass, is what I want to call it. And he uses that in Exodus chapter 38. If you remember, I, I said to make sure to keep that kind of close to you. If you remember in Exodus chapter 38, you will see, let me get back there to that, Exodus chapter 38, verse 4. And he made for the altar a brazen greater network under the compass thereof beneath in the midst of it. So the compass, a compass is a, is a, is a guiding tool. So this, this fire that came down from heaven was the compass of God. It was the guidance of God for the people of God. It was fire. Cloud by day, fire at night. Cloud by day, fire at night. Say it with me. Say cloud by day, fire at night. Say it again. Say cloud by day, fire at night. So it didn't matter what, when it was, whether it was day or night, God was leading them. Can someone say Amen. God had a plan for them. And so here this same fire that was in heaven uh, came down and it lit the altar. And the altar was the first place they came to because God said, what I want you to do is what I want to guide your life is your praise and worship. The guidance of your life, the guidance of your walk with God should be your worship and your praise. Can someone say amen? We should come to God and say, God, I'm following you. And the way I'm following you is I'm going to give you the sacrifice of praise. But we bring God the sacrifice of praise continually. We come and we bring it to God. And so this will become our, our compass. Let's go to Matthew's gospel then. Kind of to pull in the New Testament. Now, now I'm going to show you something that's kind of awesome. Uh, that uh, I'm working on a series for us preaching about in the upper room. And so there will be some time in 2019, I'm assuming, uh, be getting a whole lot of stuff that I'll be preaching, teaching, uh, a little bit of both, probably more preaching than teaching on Sundays from time to time because we're going to still work on the tabernacle. But I begin to look at the upper room, and the upper room is the place where the Holy Ghost fell on the day of Pentecost, the 50th day. It's when it fell. The power of the, of the Holy Ghost fell on the day of Pentecost. When it fell on the day of Pentecost, uh, uh, the Bible says they were all enlightened, and 3,000 people. Peter gets up and preaches and says, This is that which spoke by the prophet Joel. In the last days, I brought my spirit upon my flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. You won't be to dream dreams. You won't see visions. 3,000 people added to the church. How interesting that is to go back to what we were just kind of reading and not going to take the time to, to read it all. But after the, uh, the, the power of the law, after the law was read and the fire of God came down, 3,000 was killed in the Old Testament. 3,000 people died in the Old Testament when the fire of God fell. But then we walked into a New Testament where the blood of Jesus went in and came to the brazen altar. And so when the power of the Holy Ghost fell, it didn't come and kill 3,000. It came in and empowered. I'm, I'm trying, I'm going to do my best to behave right there, all right? But you've got to think about it. We are living in a new covenant. What should kill us has now given us life. Can someone say amen? Matthew's Gospel, chapter 3, verse 11. Let's read it. He says, I need baptizing with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. There is something with fire. I just don't want to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. I want to be baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. See, there's some people, they want the Holy Ghost, but they don't want the fire. Oh, it's too much for them. They'll burn up too much for them. And I'll tell you why they want the, don't want the fire. It's because what we're about to talk about here in just a few seconds. Uh, the, the fire, it does something to you. The fire changes.
cleanses you. The fire brings you. Things happen to you. The fire cleanses you. There's a lot of things that it was to be done. So this fire was their guidance. It was their compass in the wilderness. So it was appropriate that the fire was to be their compass at the altar. This allowed them to follow the fire of God. So guess what? When you get baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire, that's what becomes your compass. That's what leads you, guides you. And that's why a lot of people, they're walking around like, like, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Well, if you've got the Holy Ghost and fire, you've got a compass. And if you begin to use that compass, that thing will lead you and guide you into all truth. Because Jesus said, when the Spirit of, of God comes and the Spirit of truth comes, it shall lead you and guide you into all truth. So when we Want to, when we're trying to wonder what I need to do, what I need to do, what I need to go, what I need to say, what I need to have, you know what you need to do? You need to get in your prayer closet and say, God, let the, let the fire show me. Let the fire guide me. Let the fire move me. It, let, let it be my compass. Let it be my compass. When there ain't no fire, I don't want to be because if there's no fire, there's no compass. There's no leading and no guiding. And so let me tell you something tonight. Saints, there's get ready to be a, a, an influx of people that are going to start coming here and other places. There may be some things that's going to inspire that to come, but they're going to get here and they're going to say, what do I need to do? Where do I need to go? And if there's no fire, they're going to leave. They're going to need to be a place where there is a fire from God. Not a man-made fire, not a woman fire. John said, I'm baptizing you in water. I'm putting you in something that I can do. He said, but there is somebody that will come after me that I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm preparing you for what's coming and I've come to tell you what God is about to do. It ain't going to come by Western water. It ain't going to come just because of Tim McCoy. It ain't going to come because of TV preacher, but there's one coming after us that's going to do some baptizing, and it's going to be in the Holy Ghost and fire, and what has been out of style is about to come back in style. What people think is crazy and ridiculous, and what people think you've lost your mind, they're going to come running and say, show me what to do. Show me how to live. I need some help from God. Yes. Yeah. Someone say Amen. Uh, we see here uh, that this fire that it was started, we, we read this last week, Leviticus chapter, uh, uh, chapter 6, uh, verse 13, that it was uh, after God started this fire, that it was their job to keep it going, to bring them the sacrifice of praise, which then puts us back in our part, that it's our job to keep the fire of God burning. Did someone say amen? amen. It is work to keep the fire burning. I, I, I burn just a little uh, uh, a little fire every day in my house, especially when it's cold. It's work to keep it going. A lot of people don't like doing it. Oh, they like they like to feel the effects of it. But Tim's one of them. Oh, you got the fire started? Yeah. Look, Tim, what? Well, let's put a fireplace in your house. Nah, gets everything dirty. Too much work. Oh, but oh, it keeps me warm. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so you guess guess what? You gotta just got like having a fireplace. There's gonna be people that kind of use. They're gonna use a house that's on fire. They don't want to do the work, but they want the benefit. Reach on back, right? You, you're learning a little bit about leadership. Can someone say amen? When you get into that moment, you I, and I, I wasn't using Tim in a bad way. I'm just using him because. If you can around me long enough, I'll use something you do. Just I tell you that right now. Get ready. I'll call you out and tell you something. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, so my kids hate it. They know that I'm going to preach on them somehow, some way, some, sometime in the future. So, But we've got to keep the fire burning. And then which just takes us to Leviticus, uh, Leviticus chapter 10, verses 1 through 2. Now, I, I want to deal with this just for a second. Okay? To show you what we cannot do. Can you go with me? Leviticus chapter 10. So it was the, this was the fire of God. Whose fire? God's fire. God's fire. Look, look, look what happens here. Okay. Leviticus chapter 10, verse number 1. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer and put fire therein, and put incense thereon, and offered what? What is it? Come on, talk to me. Strange. Strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there went out a fire from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Yes. Why? Because they offered strange fire. Right. They tried to go into the holy place. 
with their power. Yeah, yeah. With what they can do. Yeah. Now there is a difference between what you can do and what God has put in you to do. Right. There is, uh, and I hope you understand what I'm about to say, and, and I know on social media, uh, and, and we do Facebook Live, so there's some things I cannot be as vocal about because um, sometimes I make this happy body if somebody turn it off and say, if you want to know what I said, come see me. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. <laughs> but uh, uh, but you'll, you'll see it here, you have seen it here, you will see it here, you go to other places, you will see people offering up to God strange fire. And if you don't know the difference between real fire and strange fire, you will think that they are, oh, that's, that's good. But that's not, good is not God. Everybody shouts and full of the Holy Ghost. Everybody dances and doing it for the, the right reasons. There's some people want to be seen. They have a spirit of attention that then brings a spirit of distraction. And then that's what the devil likes. There's somebody that needs attention. Oh, I feel like so what they're doing is not for God. It's for themselves. And then when it becomes for themselves, then it begins to distract everybody. Can I keep talking in here? And so you have to work. When you see that spirit operating, you have to start praying against that thing. Because that is strange fire. That is not God fire. Because when there is real God fire in you, it is not about you. It's not about you being seen, but it's about the fire of God burning brighter and brighter in your life. These men, they knew in a bit of hand, they was, they was going into the tabernacle with what they could do. And when you can do it, when you are coming to God, because think about it, the sacrifice that they brought to the praise of the Lord, they didn't make it. They didn't make the turtle dust. They didn't make the, the, the lamb. They didn't make the sheep. They didn't make the goat. They didn't make the bull. Anything that they brought, it was what God had already given them. And they were just giving back to God what God had put in their possession. They was not trying to bring something that they themselves could do. And I come to tell you that we cannot try to come to God and say, all right, God, here I am, big and bad. Like I said earlier, sometimes you got to come to God and say, God, what I've got is you've already given to me. And I'm just giving back to you a little bit of the energy and the blessing and the praise of the glory and the money and the joy and the peace that you've already given to me. It's got to be my feet, but it's got to be his fire. They, they, dab in the Bible. They, they, they went in to the tabernacle from the present order. They conjured up a fire. They went in. They, they did their part by going in. But what they, when they went in, they didn't go in with, with God's fire. They went in with their fire, with their light. Right. I don't want my light to be seen. I want his light to be seen. Did yeah. someone say amen? Yeah. So this takes us to the fire in itself. And then I'm going to give me five minutes. I can do it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the fire here, there's a few, four points. And I, I am going to finish tonight on this. I've got four, four quick points here that we're going to talk about. All right? It shows about the fire. How important it was at the prison altar and throughout the temple. The first thing about the fire, now see, now that people talk like, I want the fire. I want the fire. But I'm going to ask you, when you're really done, do you want to want the fire? Because what I'm about to show you, it takes work. All right? The fire was first, first for purification. It purified. It makes something, the word pure means uh, to be clean or to be holy. So what fire does is it purifies something. You uh, see the old westerns, but they have to dig out a bullet. You know what they, they, before they would dig out a bullet, they'd say, put your, put your knife blade into the fire. Because they didn't want you to dig around in that womb with an unclean blade. To sterilize it. Because what the fire does is it kills all the impurities. It gets all the stuff that's hanging on to it. See, that, that's what real fire does. Real fire from God cleans people up. When you really get on fire for God, you can't get on fire for God and still want to cuss. Yeah, and still want to listen to your Let me get my Bible. Let me get my book. I'm not getting mad. Go to Numbers. Go to Numbers. Chapter 
31. Is this good teaching? It was a purifier. Numbers 31, 21. 31, 21. And let, now listen to this. Because uh, but, and I, I've got it here on the slide, and, and this is what shows about the fire. The fire was a purifier. Before you could possess anything, even in battle, it had to go through the fire. Listen to this. And Eli is all the priest said unto the men of war, which went to the battle. This is the ordinance of the law, which the, the, the Lord uh, commanded Moses. Only the gold and the silver and the brass, the iron, the tin, and the lead, everything that may abide the fire, you shall make it go through the fire, and it shall be what? It would what? Yeah, it was, but what does that word say? Purified means what? And it shall be what? Clean. clean. So it has to go through what to be clean? Fire. Woo, fire. Okay. So nevertheless, it shall be purified with the water of separation. So after it goes to the fire, then the water is put on it. This sounds like the tabernacle. Because after you come to the brazen altar, the fire, then you go to the brazen labor, which has the water. Which it speaks of baptism, and that's what we'll preach on. We we'll start talking about the present later. Of separation. Of what? The water of what? Water of what? Separation. When you really get on the fire of God, and you get on fire, fire for God, and you're baptized into what He's doing, and guess what? It separates you. We live in a world where everybody says, let's be included. That's all inclusion. That's whatever. But guess what? That's not how the Bible is. You, you are separated people. Call that not better. You're just separated. You come from the same back. You've just been pulled out. Jesus said, you didn't choose me, but what? I chose you. John 16. Can I keep reading? Uh, the water of separation. And all that abideth not, the fire shall make go through the water. And ye shall wash your clothes on the seventh day, and ye shall be clean, and after ye shall go into the camp. So, so here, for the process of getting anything in the battles, the spoils of war, was only was able to be received after it went through the fire. Why? Why would God want to do it that way? Because God wanted to be clean before they possessed it. Because things that's not been through the fire carry spirits. And when you start to get a hold of things that have not been brought through the fire, then those spirits that are on them will then get off of them and get onto you. So he said, "What well, when you go to war, and in a war, when you get the gold and the silver and the tin, and all that good stuff, that's meant for you. But I, I, I won't put it before you can possess it, before you can have it. You've got to put it through the fire. And if it makes it through the fire, then God wants you to have it. And if it don't make it through the fire, then God didn't want you to have it. And that's how you've got to pray. God, whatever you want me to have, put it through the fire. And if it makes it through the fire, then I want it. If it don't make it through the fire, then I don't need it. I don't want it. Burn it up because it's no good for me. Yeah. Yeah. It speaks to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Let's go to the New Testament. It's 8.02. Well, give me, can you give me eight minutes? I'm going to do my best, okay? I know sometimes I get long. I, I just really enjoy teaching. This is something I'm not about to do. I've been... <laughs> teaching now for a year and a half or well, not a half yet but a little over a year now as your pastor but as an evangelist I never got to do that much and I love to teach 1st Corinthians chapter 3 verse 11 for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid which is Jesus Christ this is good now if any man build upon the foundation now what, who's the foundation Jesus Christ, all right? So if you, whatever you build on the foundation, now listen, gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be what? By what? Fire. Revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved yet as so as by fire. Yeah. Woo, did you see it? So whatever you build, whatever you decide to put on Christ, one day the fire will come. And when that fire is put upon it, 
then guess what? You will find out that what you build upon it will last or not. Amen. And if it's of God, it will last. And if it's not of God, it won't last. Right. Can someone say amen? amen? So it's a purifier. God wants us to have purification. Go to Isaiah chapter 6. We, we preached this last year. I'm already in 2019, really earlier this year. Uh, Isaiah chapter uh, 6. Isaiah has a personal encounter. Isaiah sees something in the year that King Uzziah died. And he saw the Lord high lifted up, his train filled the temple. And he seen the angels flying around, crying, Holy, Holy. The doors uh, and the most of the doors were moved, and the voice of them that were filled and uh, that were that, that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. And he said, I'm, I'm, he said, Now listen to verse 5. Then said, I woke with me, for I, I am undone. Because I am a man of what? Unclean lips. Unpurified lips. And I dwell in the midst of a, a, a pe a, a, of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal. That word live coal means a coal that's on fire. From where? A live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongues from off where? The altar. So the altar is what had the fire. Had the live coals. And he took that, and he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lord, this hath touched my lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. What purged it? What would take away the iniquity? The fire. The churches that tell you that they're on fire, but people are still living the same way they're living before they said they got saved. That ain't real fire. That's strange fire. That's their fire. Because the true fire of God will change you. It, it'll purify you. It'll make you holy. It'll make you right. Can someone say amen? amen? So here now, so the first thing that the fire was was for purification. Then, uh, then, then that takes us to what also the fire was for. Uh, and I, I'm going to do my best. The fire was also for revelation. Okay? Uh, Exodus 3 and 3, God revealed himself in the fire. Moses is out uh, wandering. Uh, at, at, on the back side of the desert, he was the, the leader of God. And God, he sees a, a, a bush that's on fire, but yet not consumed. And goes up to it. It was the burning bush, we call it. And God speaks to him out of it and said, hey, Moses, take your shoes off. But you're standing on holy ground. And he tells him his purpose and his will. But God revealed himself in the fire to Moses. And God revealed the purpose that for Moses in the fire. If you want to know what God wants you to do, get on fire. On fire for God. In, uh, Exodus 19 18, write these down. Uh, that the fire was for revelation. Why is the fire for revelation? Because fire is what produces light. And light is what reveals. Hey, yeah. For instance, I turn, if I was to turn all the lights over here right now, go like, boom. No light on. It's dark in this building. I've been here. It's like that. Okay? You can't see anything. But as soon as I turn the light on, electricity is a form of fire. Or if I was to take a, a match and, and strike it, you would then be able to see. Yeah. It reveals yeah. what you could not see. That's why it is a revealer. Let's go to Revelation chapter 1. I'll tell you something about God. Revelation chapter 1. Verse 14. Let us read 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, okay, candlesticks are what produce fire. We'll talk about that uh, when we get to the golden candlesticks. One like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girded about the paths with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Eyes. Now, eyes is a flame of fire. Eyes. As a flame of fire, eyes. What, what, what gives you, what gives you vision? Eyes. It, without a vision, proverbs, the people perish. But if there is no fire, then there is no vision. If there is no light, there's no no no, no use to have eyes. Think about it. we lived in a world that was dark. What good would 2020 vision do? If there's no way to produce any light. Light is what makes the eyes uh, important. Fire is what makes the eyes important. 
So what the eyes of a flame of fire, eyes equal vision, and vision equals revelation. But it only comes by light. It only comes by fire. So if you want God to show you something, you've got to get in the fire. you got to produce the fire. Can someone say amen? Uh, Exodus 13, 21, the pillar of fire is what led them by night. It was their revelation. They had, they did not have what we have today. They did not have night lights. They did not have cars in front of them. Uh, they, they, they had headlights that could show where they were going. They only had the fire. Now, it's a revelation. I'm going to show you something. Um, when you get a chance, uh, I want you to get this scripture and kind of um, take it. To the, I believe it's, it's in Psalms. It is uh, 118 and 119. Your research is precious. But it says that the word of God is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my what pathway. The word of God is a lamp unto my feet, light unto my pathway. And I'll tell you why they did this is because I did my research. Why would they call it the word of God is a lamp unto my feet, light unto my pathway? Well, when they would walk at night, they did not have what we had. So what they would do is they had little lamps, little what they called, uh, that went around the ankles, they had a strap. And what they would do is they would put it around. They would tie around each ankle, okay? And they would produce enough light. So when they was walking and they would go to take a step, the light from off of that lamp would be there enough to take one step at a time. They didn't have to look into the future. They couldn't see it because it was walking at night. And we live in a dark world. We're walking at night, people. So some of us need to quit worrying about tomorrow and walk today. Because you can't see until tomorrow. Come on, somebody. You can't see until the sun comes up. So in, until the sun comes up, you have to take one step at a time. And as they would take a step, the light off of that foot would go before them. And it would be enough to help them make the decisions to keep walking on the path that they were walking. But it did not stop them from stepping. And what we cannot do is we cannot let this dark world stop us from walking into the things of God. That's why we got to say, Lord, let your word be a lamp unto my feet. Let it be a light unto my pathway. Let it be a revelation to me. God, if I'm not to make a, a mistake, Lord, that your work go before me and show me the pitfall, show me the trap that I'm about to fall into. Can somebody say amen? So remember that. The fire is for purification. The fire is for, the fire is for revelation. But then also the fire, my last two points, this is number three, is for transfiguration. Let's go to the book of Malachi, chapter three. Yes, yes, yes. Malachi chapter 3, verse 2. Listen to this. This is interesting. But who may abide in the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Can I keep reading one more? Then shall the offering of Judah Jerusalem be pleasant to the Lord as in the days of old and as in the former years. What God is doing, what he from Malachi was showing him is this is what's happening. Just as a, just as a refiner, as a silversmith, uh, begins to put silver and gold into the fire, so is God doing the, Le the, the Levites that way to, to transfigure them. When you take, a, a, like, my instance, the, the, the ring that I have got on, it is, uh, when it, they didn't find it this way. When they when they got it, it was all, had all kinds of other minerals in it. What they had to do is that they put it into the fire to get all the minerals separated from it, and then they was able to make it into a ring. But it was transfigured. It, this ring is not does not look like the way it used to look. It's still it's still white. This is white gold, whatever. This is white gold, but it's still not. It doesn't look like it used to. It's been transfigured. Why? Because it's been put in the fire. Why? Because when you put it in the fire, it all it, it, it brings purification, revelation, yeah. then which produces transfiguration. To be changed in the image of the Son of God. That's what we're trying to be. Get someone say amen. To be like Jesus. So what the fire does is it transfigures. It changes from the form and the, uh, the form and the appearance of what it was. We need the fire of God to change who we are. Can yeah. someone say amen? To be more like him. The way that the silversmith would know that the, the gold or, or, the, or the goldsmith would even know that the gold was ready to be uh, dipped out is when they would 
uh, put it in the fire, all of the impurifications, all the other minerals float to the top. The gold becomes liquid, silver becomes liquid. It's able to be able to flow when it gets hot. And so then all the other pure, uh, uh, impurities will come to the top and they scoop the, uh, as much out of it as they can. Because, because even though they get the impurities out, they get a little bit of gold out. But see, when it comes down to God changing you, you lose a little bit of you. You remember when Jesus came up and, and found the man, uh, the boy that had been uh, throwing himself into the fire and, and throwing himself into the water. The spirit was trying to drown him and also trying to burn him. Do you remember that? The Bible says that when Jesus cast the devil out of him, that the devil ripped him when he came out. That, that word ripped him to tear. So when he got delivered, it tore him on the way out. It costed him something to get delivered. And if some of you will be honest, when you got saved and when God pulled you out of sin and he, and he, and he delivered some things out of you, that was part of you that left. Oh, come on, somebody. It was, you lost part of who you are. Well, but I'm going to lose a little bit of who I am than to lose everything that I am. Can okay, someone say amen? amen. I'm going to lose a little bit. So that, that's what happens. And then when, and when they, and then finally, when they're able to know that it is perfectly ready to be able to be transfigured into what they want, is they can look at that and they can see their image clearly. So the goldsmith and silversmith can look over, and when they can see their image like a mirror, they can say, all right, it's ready to be made into what I want to make. Yeah. And so until we can be asked to be made vessels of God, until we look like him. That's right. Don't think about it. Don't think about it. Last point. Because they are trying to get back up the home. The fire was to be spread. The fire was for purification. The fire was for revelation. The fire was from transfiguration, which leads us to the last one. The fire was to be spread. They were commanded to take the fire from the altar and go to the holy place and light the candlesticks to provide the light there. As they're walking through the tabernacle and up the cross, uh, up and down the cross, as it continues, we should never lose our fire of salvation, but should carry it with us as we get closer to knowing the fullness of the light. They didn't lose the fire because they get closer to God. Get closer to the holy. They kept the fire. They kept the fire. We ought to keep the fire. We're going to transfer up the fire. Someone say amen. But it'll be something that's burning in our souls and burning in our hearts, burning in our lives. We're going to be a, tra a, 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 a person, a Christian believer that can transport it and beat it and spread it from place to place. The fire was a, was a purification. It was for revelation. It was for transgression. And that's what I'm working on. That's what I, God has put me here. And that's what God is. You know, I, I get told all the time, I used to get really for a lot, but I'm a fireball preacher. And, uh, Turn the knobs and you're going to have a ginger snap. <laughs> Whatever. Well, long as talk about the fire of God, I'm happy about it. Can someone say amen? They got a form of red hair because I'm supposed to carry the fire. I don't know. You can call it whatever you want to call it. But the reason I, I want to carry the fire is because that is to have you get to the presence of God. Yes, sir. And they never want to lose that. I always want to continue to keep that. The fire is important. This is at the beginning. Salvation. How many remember when you first got saved? Come on. Wait a minute. Do you remember when you first got right with God? Wait a minute. So, Pastor, I remember when I got right with God. What, what, what was the terminology that they said about you? My God, they're on fire for God. What's happened between now and then? You should be more on fire now. Come on, somebody. Because you're closer. You should be closer. Shouldn't we all be closer? Day two, you ought to be closer to God than the first day you got saved. Come on now, amen. You should know it better. You should know it greater. Your fire will be burning even greater. You should work on it. It takes work. But you ought to say, God, give me the fire. And slip your hands up the door. Father God, I thank you. Praise you, Lord, for every person here tonight. Every child, every, every, everybody that's in here, Lord, I thank you, God, for the time that they gave you with their minds and their senses and their actions. God, I pray, God, tonight that as they leave here that they want to say, all right, I'm with the pastor. I want to keep the fire of God burning here greater in the church. I don't want the people to drop eyes and say, my God, that's a dead church. It's just a bunch of smoke, but there's no fire, God. I want them, Lord, God, that when people come out, they know that this place is on fire for your spirit, by your power, for your glory. God, not strange fire, not Wesley's fire, not no light man's fire, but God, let it be your fire that will purify us, your fire that will transfigure us, your fire that will build to us, God, your fire that will be spread to our community, our country, and our nation. In Jesus' name, God, the devil even says, Amen. Yeah. So we'll clap your hands and give God glory. Hallelujah. And somebody say, I'm going to keep the fire burning. Keep the fire burning. God starts it, we've got to keep it burning. Amen. Amen. We've got to keep the fire burning. 
You got to keep it going. It's like when you first get, you first get married. You're on fire for each other. You know, then time starts working, and you got to work to keep that fire. Because I'm going to say amen. How many of you have been married for a while? You know what I'm talking about. You got to work on it. You got to work on it. And tonight I'm going to come to you for an offering. Amen. Hush. Go on. I'm going to come to you for an offering tonight. Amen. But we can do that to you too. Give something. Laugh. I'm just playing. Lord, have mercy. Yeah, no shit. Give an offering. Deacon Greek, would you come and be our uh, usher tonight? Amen. Thank you for our Wednesday night Bible off here at the storehouse of the Lord. Thank you for those that have come tonight. I know the holidays are, are heavy upon us. And I guess some people's ate too much, and some people's worked too much, and some people's done too much. And someone say amen. Uh, as much as I I, I love the birth of Christ. I'm glad, glad to sometimes see it go because we materialize it so much. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. And so maybe we can get back to a good regular schedule. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Get the power of God flow. But I thank you for coming tonight. All that is there here. I'm ready to receive the teach word of the Lord. Amen. Deacon, would you pray for that and receive the offering?